The passenger side xenon headlight in this 2008 BMW 135i doesn't work. Diagnosing xenon headlights can be a little tricky, so I'm going to show you step by step and how we diagnose it, and hopefully you can apply it at home so you have a better understanding of it. As you can see, the passenger side headlight is not on and the driver's side is, so we definitely got a problem with the right headlight. Interesting note is this headlight was replaced recently. A couple of months ago, I believe it was replaced. So we're gonna check it out and see what's going on there. I'm gonna show you the tools that I'm using in this video. I'm using a, an electric quarter inch ratchet. I know I'm cheating a little bit, but that's easier. Uh, if you don't have an electric, no problem. You can just use a normal quarter inch ratchet. I'm using a quarter inch bit driver, a 90 degree pick, a pry tool. I'm also using a long T30 Torx. It has to be a skinny long T30, about six inches or so. I'm also using a short T30 Torx, a T20 Torx. It doesn't have to be long, but that's the one I'm using. Eight millimeter socket, 10 millimeter socket. I'm using a short quarter inch extension, a long quarter inch extension. I've got a magnet just in case I drop a bolt and we're gonna need some masking tape to help save the paint. The footwell module, we're gonna check the fault codes. Dipped beam left faulty, which is interesting because the left light is working, the right is what's not working. So uh, that's a little strange, but that's okay. We're gonna to continue to diagnose. Before we get too deep into the car, I wanna talk about what could be the problem. Xenon headlights have an igniter, uh, HID, which stands for High Intensity Discharge Bulb. They have an, a module, a lot of wiring in the headlights. It's controlled by a control unit in the car called the FRM. So the FRM could be faulty. Wiring between the FRM to the headlight could be faulty. Wiring inside the headlight could be faulty. The control module in the headlight could be faulty. The headlight itself could be faulty. The bulb, and in this case, the igniter is attached to the bulb, could be faulty as well. So we're gonna go through step by step and, and start eliminating the process and figure out what exactly is the problem. I will tell you the most common problem is either a headlight, a module, or a bulb. So let's get into it and see what's wrong. By the way, guys, my name is Jamie. I own a European shop in Sarasota, Florida, but I'm here for you. I'm gonna show you how to work on your own BMWs at home. So if you wouldn't mind, please give me a thumbs up. I'm not gonna waste any more of your time, so let's just get going with the video, come on. All right, as of right now, the passenger side headlight isn't working, the driver's side is. So what we're gonna try to do is swap components left to right. They're the same part number left and right for the exception of the headlight. Um, you can still swap headlights left to right because the connector is the same, but we're gonna start off with the bulb since that's the most common. We don't have to take too much apart. We have to pop the cover off the back of the headlight. The driver's side, we're gonna take the cover off. We're gonna remove the bulbs. We're gonna switch them left to right and we're gonna turn the headlights on and see if the fault moves. If the passenger side light works and the driver's side light doesn't, then we know we have a faulty bulb. We can stop our diagnosis from there and replace the bulb and we're done. On the back of each headlight, they have these wire clips. We're gonna unsnap each one, one on that side and there's one on this side over here. A little hard to see. Okay, this cover is gonna tilt down and we're gonna have to kind of sneak it out. It gets a little tricky. Driver's side is actually a lot easier than the passenger side. Okay, that's what the cover looks like. You can see the two little feet there at the bottom. They kind of hook in at the bottom and then get closed. It also has a rubber gasket. It's a good idea to take a look at this rubber gasket to make sure it's not ripped or torn or anything because if water gets into the headlight, it can cause a problem. This gasket looks pretty good. Okay, here's the headlight. Uh, igniter and the bulb is attached to it. We're gonna unplug the connector that's underneath of it. Okay, the headlight bulb has this locking retainer. Rotate it up, unplug it from here, and pull it out. Okay, here's what the xenon bulb looks like when it's outside of the headlight. So the bulb is this portion here. You don't ever wanna touch this with your fingers, by the way. The oil on your fingers can cause this bulb to fail prematurely. This electronic box on the back is the igniter. So any of this could be bad. If I swap this to the other headlight and all of a sudden it, that one works and the other one doesn't, then we'll know that the, um, the, the fault is in this component. So let's go ahead and switch those and see what happens. Okay, this side's gonna be a little bit more difficult. You have this oil cooler line that's in the way and you got the cover that goes right up against this line. Let me see if I can get a better orientation for you guys. 
So what I have to do is kind of push this line out of the way after I get this unclipped and it'll help get it out a little bit. So let's go ahead and pop this clip off. I'm trying to hold the camera and do it at the same time, so I apologize if the it's not great. Okay, then we got one more clip over here on the end. Hidden by my hand. Okay, so the cover is loose. We're gonna push this out of the way and try to get the cover out with one hand while I hold the camera. If it's a bit shaky, I'm sorry. Okay, now it's out. Let's check the gasket on this one. That actually looks pretty good. So we're gonna set that out of the way. We're gonna pull the connector off this headlight bulb, unlock it. There's a little locking retainer. I'll show it to you when I got the headlight out. Unlock the retainer, pull the headlight out. Okay, remember we don't touch this top part here. Now I am suspecting this could be faulty, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark the back of this with a uh, permanent marker, just a little X there, just so I don't lose track of which one is which. Just a little X right there. That's the one that I'm suspecting could be faulty, so let's go ahead and put it on the driver's side and see if it works, and then we'll put the driver's side on the passenger side. I think this is a good time to tell you it is highly recommended that you disconnect the battery because this is high voltage stuff you're dealing with. That is the recommendation from the factory. I will tell you, I don't disconnect the battery. I don't like disconnecting and reconnecting the batteries because you do have to check every time you swap a component, you gotta turn the headlights back on. And if you constantly disconnect and reconnect the battery, you could cause other damage to the car. So I just make sure that the key is out of the ignition, the headlights are turned off. You know, there's no power going to those headlights when I'm working on them. Just a little side note. Okay, I've taken the bulb out of here and I've put it in there and I took the bulb out of that one and put it here. Let's turn the headlights on and see what we've got. Headlights are on. Let's go check the fronts and see what it looks like. Okay, the passenger light is still out. The driver's side light is on, so we know that it's not the light bulb. Uh, the next step is to get to the headlight control module and check that. So what we need to do is remove the headlights from the car. Unfortunately, on this car, that means removing the bumper. This rubber strip clips onto the lights, so you just have to unclip them. Pretty easy. We're gonna do that to both sides. I'm gonna leave it attached to the bumper. We're gonna use a T30 Torx to take uh, these four bolts off. To remove the bumper, there's four Torx bolts up here. There's an eight millimeter screw up here. There's also some eight millimeter screws down here and there's some eight millimeters along the bottom. Uh, before we remove the bumper, we're also gonna need to remove the headlight washer cover, a little tricky, I'll show you how to do that. We're gonna tape around here so we don't damage the paint. We're also gonna tape around these corners so we don't damage the paint. Taking these headlight washer covers off and putting them back on is the hardest part of the job. It's got a spring-loaded nozzle in there that wants to suck this thing down. So we have to fight against the spring, unclip this, and let that suck back in. And that's why I've got this taped off. We're gonna have to use a, a plastic, we're gonna have to use a plastic pry tool here. Get under it like this, pull up, and there's a couple of ears. This is fighting me pretty hard, so I gotta hold it with one hand, unclip these clips on each side like that. There we go. So you can see what the clip looks like here. And the nozzle got sucked back down in there. So when we take it back out, I'm going to use a 90 degree pick to pull it out, hold it, and then put it back in. So those are a little tricky. 
I'll try to give you a better angle on this one so you can get a better idea of how this works. See that? I'm gonna let go of this, get sucked back in there. I've got the car on the lift here. The suspension is hanging. You guys are gonna have to, if you're doing this at home, the car's gonna have to be on jack stands. You can take the wheel off, it'll be it'll give you a lot more room. I don't just because of the tools I have, but if you can't get in there, you may have to take the wheel off. There is an eight millimeter, get my flashlight in here. Can you see it? Probably not. Oh, barely. Ah, let me point to it. All right, there is an eight millimeter right here. There's another one that you can't see. It goes up here, you can see the end of the screw. There's another one down here, right in here. <laughs> so we have those on each side. And then under the car, we have a few eight millimeter screws that go all the way down the bottom of the car. We're gonna remove those as well. This is why I have my short quarter inch extension and my long quarter inch extension. My long quarter inch extension is gonna get under here. My short one is gonna get in here. And now I put the long one on to get the one up top. I always remove all the screws. I think there's one or two that actually hold just this air dam on, but I just went ahead and take them all out. And this just kind of slides out like this. And we'll put this out of the way for now. Same thing with this side. All right, all the hardware that holds this bumper on is now off. If your car has fog lights or park sensors, once you release the bumper, you're gonna have to reach your hand behind there and unplug them. Some cars, the master switch or the master connector is on this side, but I believe most of them are on the passenger side. So once you release it, shove your hand back there. It should be a master connector. You'll be able to unplug that. That way the car bumper can come completely off. This one doesn't have fog lights. It doesn't have parking sensors. So there's nothing holding us back. We're just ready to take it off. This right here is clipped in. When you get your hand behind it, you're gonna pull out and it's gonna pop. It sounds like you're gonna break it, but you're not breaking it. Just like that. You can see the bumper is already getting loose. At this point, it's a good idea to have a second hand or a helper. Uh, I don't have a second person here, so I'm using a bumper. Uh, I'm using a stand that the bumper is going to fold down onto. But like I said, having another person definitely helps. I know what you're thinking. You gotta do all of this just to pull the headlights out? Yes, yes you do. The module on the headlight is located underneath of it and there's no way to get to it unless you pull it out of the car. So these are the steps we have to take. Now that the bumper has been removed, this bracket right here is what the headlight bolts to. There's a screw on the back side. We'll have to peel the fender liner back. It's an eight millimeter, we'll have to pull that out. There's a 10 millimeter up here there's a T30 here, a, T, a T30 here, and a T30 behind this support. So there's a few screws we do have to get out of the way. They're all, some of them are easy to get to, some of them are a little tricky, but let's go through them right now. All right, the more tricky one is behind here. So what I do is this fender liner, I just kind of peel it back. You can take it out if you want to get full access. And up in there, up in there, let me get a better light. Okay, with a better light, Okay, so up in there, can you see it kind of peeking around the corner? Right there, kind of see half of it. Okay, so we'll have to take that one out. That's where the long extension and eight millimeter come into play.
Okay, the next two bolts we're going to take off are the bracket. There's one here and one down here. Now remember we got a short T30. This is the reason why. This push bar is in the way. Now yes, I could remove this bar, but there's a, there's a lot more work to that. I'm trying to save time here. So by having a short one of these, get down here, you can break this thing loose. You get it loose enough, you can just get the socket down there in your hand and take it out the rest of the way. Now that the bottoms were removed, we can just use a regular ratchet. Of course, I'm going to use my electric ratchet. This 10 millimeter gets removed. It's like a three mile long bolt. Easy enough. Okay, the headlight should be ready to come out now, right? No, no, there's two more bolts. There's one down here and there's one way down here. We'll get to that in a second, but let's get to this one first. These two bolts are the reason we need the long skinny T30 Torx. This is about, I'd say six to seven, maybe eight inches long. So we're gonna use this to get to these. The, the reason why they're just so far deep down there. This one doesn't have to be skinny. You can use like a, an extension and a socket. This one, however, we will need the skinny one. I'll show you in a minute. Okay, looking straight down at the headlight here, you can see it way down there. So we're gonna use this. This might be a good time to use that magnet as well. Um, sometimes it's a little tight in there, but let's see if I can do it like that. There we go. The last screw is actually way down there in this little hole. Let's see if we can get it to focus right there. Conveniently enough, BMW gives us an access hole right here, but it's so small that you can't get a socket in there. That's why we need a really skinny Torx bit. All right, I know this is gonna be very hard for you to see at home what I'm doing, but you can see how deep that goes, All right? That's how deep it goes when it gets to the socket. I mean, not stock it to the bolt. So we're gonna loosen this up. Okay, so now we gotta get it out. I usually stick my hand in the back and there we go. There's the bolt. Okay, the headlight is free. It's pretty much ready to come out. There's one last thing though. We need to unplug it. <laughs> we're not gonna get very far. The connector is down there. There is, let me turn it around here. On the end of the connector, there are two tabs. You basically squeeze it like this and then pull it straight out. You're probably not gonna see it because my hand is gonna be in the way. There we go. Here's the connector. Here are the tabs that I was talking about, one on each side. So you squeeze it and then pull it straight off the back of the headlight. From here, you kind of have to wrestle it out. Be very careful with the edges that so you don't scratch the paint. Uh, I usually pull this bracket down like this just to get it enough. There's actually a little alignment pin right here. So you're gonna pull it off of the bracket. This black plastic bracket is gonna stay attached to the car. It's got the washer uh, nozzle system attached to it and I just prefer to keep it in the car. And there we go, just like that. While we're here, you get a closer look at this bracket. Uh, this is the bolt that we took off here. This was that one that was way down in there. This here has this pin, or this alignment plastic piece here that actually goes up into the fender. Can you see it? Let me get you a better light. All right, so this little pin right here goes right into this fender. That's where it lines up and keeps everything you know, aligned. Just thought I'd show you that while I had the headlight out. Okay, and if you guys look way down on the bottom, like right right there, that's where you press the like button for this video. And uh, oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe. Now that I've got both headlights out, I like to put them on a, a clean, this is like a rubbery mat. 
you could put it on a towel or something. I just want to prevent the, the lenses from getting scratched. But here are the two control units. We're going to swap them. Now remember, this is a new headlight, new control unit looks like. We're going to release these two screws. There's a T20 Torx. We're going to swap the control units. We're going to do the same thing we did with the bulb. What I want to do is indicate this as a possible faulty control unit. Again, I'm going to put a little X on it so I'll remember which height it came from. And they just slide straight out like this. Now I'm going to take a look at the pins. They all look pretty good. This gasket looks fine. Everything looks good here. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this one over here and plug this one in over here. Now these screws screw into plastic. So I am using this, but it's not going to, I, before you guys roast me in the comments, there's no way you want to torque this down because it will ruin the threads on here. So when I, when I tighten it down, I'm going to stop it just before it gets to the end. And I'll use my quarter inch ratchet to give it a little snug. Earlier I talked about how the fault could be the wiring inside the headlight. This wiring will sometimes corrode, crumble, and come apart. Actually, there's a little bit of it. I don't know if you can see it right there. It's not too bad. It's not like it's shorting out to the other headlight or anything. This is the high beam. That's not the circuit we're having a problem with. But sometimes the wiring inside the headlight just crumbles and falls apart. At that point, you're just going to need a new headlight. But everything I see here looks really good. All right, now that we've got the control modules swapped, we're going to plug them back in. It's not necessary to put everything back together because really we're just in, we're still in the testing phase. So all I need to do is plug the connector in. We're going to set the light down without scratching the car. All right, we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Plug it in. Okay, it doesn't matter that it's not in its own home, but it's plugged in. So now we're gonna turn the headlights on and see what happens. If this light lights up and this one doesn't, then we know that the module is bad because we took the module from here to there. And look at that. The driver's side headlight is not lighting up, the passenger side is, so that tells me that the control unit that we switched was bad, which is interesting because that is a new control unit. But uh, we'll get a new control unit, we'll order one, hopefully we'll have it tomorrow, we'll put it all back together, clear the fault codes, and do a final road test. That should take care of it. Okay, it's tomorrow, today, tomorrow, anyway. I've got the bad control unit labeled, we're obviously not going to use that one, I got the new one here, I'm going to put it in the headlight. Let's get it plugged in and make sure it works. Haha, -ha, there we have it. Both headlights are working, so it was a faulty control module. Remember how I told you these covers are super tough? So here's the biggest reason why is because these are spring loaded. You guys saw me taking them out. You're gonna see me put them in. I use a hook and I kind of hook the ear of it and be really careful because sometimes this will slip off. Just like that. All right, see how it comes out there. So I have to hold it with my hand. Okay, 
try to keep it from going back in. We're gonna get these lined up. I don't know if you guys have the best angle, probably not. Okay, all lined up. That's one side, let's see if we can get a better angle from the other side. There we go, just like that. You got this tab and this tab that have to be lined up on both sides. What I wanna do now is check the gaps of the headlights and make sure they're even all the way around. Make sure I don't have a headlight that's pointing in a weird direction. We're gonna close the hood. You're probably asking yourself, if we switched headlight control units and the headlight fault did not move to the other headlight, what is the next step? And that's a great question. The next thing I would do is swap the headlights. Obviously, you can't place the headlights in the opposite directions. There are a left and a right headlight. However, the connectors are exactly the same. So I would take this headlight, place it over here and that one over there, plug them in and see if the fault changes. If it stays with the headlight, then we know we have a faulty headlight. If it stays in the same direction, then we have a problem with the power coming to that headlight. So it could be a connector, a wiring, or it could be a faulty FRM uh, footwell module. Well, I hope you guys learned a couple things. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you wouldn't mind hitting that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.